So I started my own PhD back in 2003, which is almost 15 years ago, which is a little bit scary now. But anyway, I started my PhD in physics in 2003, and initially my project was supposed to be a collaboration between two different departments. So someone from another department, another PhD student was providing samples, and then I was supposed to do various kinds of analysis on these. And I started with very high expectations, both of myself and of the PhD program in general. And I think this is true of most PhD students. Nobody starts with low expectations. So I started working, didn't really know what I was doing. And the first year, it was kind of a struggle. And it ended up with the PhD student I was collaborating with from the other departments leaving, but nobody had actually told me. So I was left in this situation where I was sending emails, but getting no replies, and it looked like my PhD would be pretty screwed. So at the end of my first year, start of the second year, I was shifted onto a different project, entirely different project, some of the same skills, but it basically meant learning some uh, really new stuff, starting again from scratch. And Again, didn't really know what I was doing, but I kind of maintained these high expectations of myself. I still wanted to do well. And things went on. It was a very difficult project because it was instrument development and things kept breaking down. And it got to my third year, so the final year of, of funding, and the pressure had really, really, really started to build. I didn't have any publishable results, whereas all the other PhD students in my research group were publishing papers, and it really looked like they were going to finish on time, but I might not finish ever. And so I had this level of stress that was just building and building and building and building. I was going in to work every day, um, but not really engaging. So I was stressed. I really wanted to do well. But I wasn't working in a very, very good way. I was undermining myself by procrastinating, by, as I said, showing up late and not really engaging with the problems that came up. So it got to maybe halfway through my third year. I was working in the lab and doing these very, very, very delicate um, sample preparation techniques. It took two or three days to get things ready to actually run an experiment. And at the very final stage, I had these little things and I dropped them. So if I basically ever hadn't gone into work that day, I would have been further ahead than I actually was as a result of the work that I had done. It wasn't the first time that this kind of thing happened. It had happened several times throughout the course of the PhD. But this time, something inside me kind of broke. As, so it wasn't just the samples that broke, it was something inside me. So all that tension that had been building up, suddenly it kind of just snapped. And I swore loudly, stormed out of the lab, and didn't know if I was going to come back. So I walked across the campus thinking... I can't take this anymore. I can't take all this stress. I can't take this constant feeling that I'm not living up to the standard that I expect of myself or that anybody else expects of me. And I thought, well, maybe I should just quit. Maybe I should find some, some other job. I didn't quite know what I wanted to do, but I figured, well, you know, I will find something. And whatever it is, it can't be as bad as this. It can't be as stressful as this. So then I started thinking, well, okay, if I quit, then obviously I've got to tell my supervisor. He'll be disappointed, I guess, but I think he'll understand. I'll have to tell my family, my friends, my colleagues, who, you know, some of whom have become very close friends. But again, if they're disappointed, I think they will understand. And so... I sat on a bench on the campus for a little while just thinking about this. And I thought, well, okay, quitting, quitting is an option. And it's not a terrible option. But I don't quite want to leave yet. So there's still a few things I can try in the lab. 
So if they, if, um, I'll go back to the lab and try these things. And if they don't work, then I'll quit. But I want to make sure that if this is going to determine whether I leave or whether I stay, I at least want to make sure that I've given it my best shot. That for once, I'm going to put all of myself into the work. And so um, I sat there for a little while longer, um, built up my resolve, calmed down a little bit, went back to the lab, and just slowed down and did things basically as carefully as I could without really worrying about the end result. So that pressure to perform, that pressure to get the results, I wasn't really worried about it anymore because I could leave. My um, self-esteem was no longer tied up in how well I did. And so I took my time, did things as carefully and as meticulously as I could. And then the experiments worked. So obviously then I thought, oh, shit, now I can't quit. So what this taught me was that the way I'd been dealing with my stress, the way I'd been approaching the PhD, I'd been constantly undermining myself because I'd put myself under so much pressure. I couldn't think creatively. I couldn't take care of the work because so much of myself was, was so much of my self-esteem was invested in it. So by just relaxing, but then doing things as carefully as I could, doing things with a lot of effort, but without worrying about the end result, things started to come together. And then I applied this to all of the rest of the experiments for the rest of the time that I had left. And I applied it to the writing of the thesis. So anytime I had an experiment, I tried to put all of my effort in, but in a relaxed way. And when I was writing my thesis, I tried to be as focused as I could on getting it done but without worrying about what the examiners thought. And this simple change in mindset, I think made the difference between me either failing or just quitting and going on to get enough data for a couple of publications, um, having enough data to be able to write my thesis, then writing the thesis pretty quickly. I did it in just three months, but to a standard that the examiners thought was one of the best that they had ever ever read. And I passed surprisingly, amazingly, um, with zero corrections to my thesis, and then went on and did a couple of postdoc contracts, and then went on ultimately to start coaching PhD students and doing the work that I do now. All of that came from basically that breakdown where I stopped worrying about the end result. I stopped worrying about what it meant about me Stop worrying about what anyone else thought about me. And that was it. Everything stemmed from that simple change. So think about how much you're investing in your PhD, what it means to you, and whether that's actually helping you or whether it's holding you back. So if you like these videos, please head to phdhelpdesk.net where we're building a set of courses, resources, events, and a community for PhD students just like you.